Good morning everyone. Sorry I couldn't be here with you. Just kind of had to be in Myanmar. So just got back today morning, 1 o'clock. So, so all that I want to say is uh, thanks for uh, making it and uh, uh, this um, a person who never uh, loses uh, patience and interest is our Prasanna, right? So, so thanks Prasanna. We thought that you will not be able to pull it off, but you pulled it off. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, Manisha has been a great help. Thanks. So, and all of you who took the trouble of coming. So, welcome to the institute and we do hope that you had a great time. And uh, so, uh, um, uh, so this is the third or fourth instance, fifth, right? Yeah, that's good. But I think what you do is you just keep this name for whatever. I think it's kind of nice, right? Yeah. Ramanujan Math IT. So just keep yeah. it. So that you seems to have, to have a uniqueness. You have to talk about so probably all. Yes, you know. So if if they agree, I think it might be a good way to kind of keep it because it seems to have a unique positioning. So. I think so we, and we have done it for five years maybe. And now the pressure is on you, you have to keep doing it. <laughs> Thank you sir, thanks for coming. Okay, over to Professor Mahabla. I am extremely happy to be here today. What uh, we started long back to commemorate the memory of a very good mathematician of our own, Professor Venkatachalayangar. He was Prasanna's grandfather. But I happened to be studying honors in mathematics when he was a professor at engineering college. What was great is, you go near him, he will say, why don't you learn Russian? We ask him why. He says, for two rupees you get a th thick book. Huh? <laughs> he was all full of mathematics and he happened to organize the mathematics portion of the uh, some celebration at Central College where all departments had thrown open their uh, departments for general public. I happened to help him organize the mathematics section and it was very educative. And uh, yesterday I happened to go to an exhibition here called Mathematica. It is going on at Max Muller Bhavan near CMH Hospital in Bangalore. They have brought in 20 puzzles from Germany which kids and students can play with and understand, think about certain concepts in mathematics thought it was a very good idea and there there was one exhibit on soap films, minimal surfaces. I remember we had organized that when Professor Vangta Chalangar organized the mathematics uh, portion of the Center College exhibition that day. I do think you people should go and have a look at that German one. I think there are probably a lot more things in mathematics, particularly in the newly developing areas of security, coding and so on, which can be converted into puzzles and demos, which students can play with and uh, appreciate and maybe get attracted to study some more in that area, because if youngsters get excited about something, chances are they will continue with this. Whereas the grown-ups tend to have too strong opinions about likes and dislikes and it's very hard to convince them about it. But it is very interestingly organized. I am glad that the one that uh, uh, we organized about five or six years back is being continued thanks to the support of Triple IT and I hope it will continue and what's, as it is happening mathematics and IT are coming closer together and uh, this is a good thing that there is a annual uh, like this and uh, 
many of the topics. But what is interesting is everybody relates back to Ramanujam <laughs> huh? and, and, and recalls something that uh, he did which could be of relevance in our uh, So I am very glad that uh, I was able to participate. I enjoy looking at the growth of these institutions, <laughs> I gather. We are going to build a seven-floor hostel for students. I am very happy and I wish this would continue. God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Just a side note, Professor Mahabala was the general chair of the first conference series. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. This is slippery floor. I don't know why they make the floor so slippery. Huh? Shall we wait for some sir? Here only for the photo or outside? Maybe you can do it for the first one. It should be better outside. I request everybody to assemble for a group photo and then we will come back for a last session by uh, PhD student. <laughs>
relevant problem. So I have a real-time Twitter feed uh, of all two years. So uh, I have Twitter feeds coming through, but I want Twitter feeds on machine learning. So how do I do that? I can either follow certain people or can I get whatever uh, somebody says on machine learning, can I somehow get it? So looking for the word machine learning is not going to cut it. There, is, there are so many other, uh, other ways to pick it. So how do I quickly pick up what are all the words which, uh, which are unique to machine learning and they would, the presence of a word would make sure that it's only machine learning. Right, so, OK. So uh, there are two major uh, motivation uh, aspects. So one is uh, I, I, the IR world, uh, where uh, we know that words are not independent of each other. There is a strong dependence, uh, strong uh, bias in the way words co-occur with each other. And uh, these dependencies between uh, words kind of help us uh, model semantics. That's the, that's the first claim. Right? And uh, there is also the cognitive science viewpoint where uh, people claim that semantic memory is, uh, so we have two kinds of memory, episodic and semantic, in terms of long-term memory. And uh, the semantic memory is made of co-activations of concepts, whereas, uh, uh, so, and you, these co-activations are like, I look at a car, I look at a road, so it, ob I obviously assume when I say a car that it is running on a road and not flying in the air. So it's that kind of uh, meaning. And uh, there is also a, a philosophical statement that uh, the meaning of a word it comes from its usage and not uh, through a dictionary or through a definition. So there have been uh, some approaches uh, to deal with this, uh, like LSA and LDA, which uh, they go up, LSA goes about doing a dimensionality reduction of a large uh, term document matrix and uh, tries to find the top k significant dimensions and collapses the rest of the dimensions so that um, uh, the the matrix somehow attains uh, uh, some semantic properties. It's not clear how the semantic properties come about, but. Uh, it has been shown that this uh, LSA kind of works in certain situations. And then uh, there is also LDA, which, uh, so uh, LDA kind of uh, models uh, topics as probability distributions of terms and uh, document as a distribution of topics. So, but uh, the problem with these approaches is that uh, they are very crude modeling uh, of semantics in the sense uh, we get to know relatedness at best, so we do not know anything better than that. And okay, I'll let me, these, these are the rule based uh, algorithms. Uh, they have their own advantages, but uh, the point of uh, the work is to uh, discount for, for, rule, uh, for the presence of rules and see if co occurrences by themselves can get us. Uh, enough uh, uh, semantics. So for this we start with a, a, cognit uh, a simple cognitive model. So what the model says is when two people communicate uh, there is an analytic layer uh, uh, which where we have our semantic memory in our head and uh, then we communicate. So this analytic layer is made of concepts and associations and everything. And then we have an episodic layer. The episodic layer kind of says that uh, it's idea units. So when I communicate a thought to, uh, from when A communicates a thought to B, uh, that's an episode. So uh, you can think of our life as a series of episodes uh, of information flowing from A to B or B to A, right? And these episodes to communicate, I put them in a linguistic structure. So the, the language is uh, another part of it. So this is how a general communication would look like. So the idea is to uh, replace the uh, episodic layers are fine. Uh, we can think of uh, textual snippets as episodes. Langu language we know, we can pick up some language. Uh, for my work, I use English. And uh, the trick is the co-occurrence layer. So uh, can we replicate whatever we have uh, as a mental model in our heads through co-occurrences? So the way I go about doing it is, so I, I'll uh, define certain uh, semantic associations in the analytic layer. So how a human would go about, uh, go about thinking about such uh, semantic associations. And then uh, provide a hypothesis on how uh, these uh, semantic associations get translated into series of episodes. And then uh, use this hypothesis to come up with a co-occurrence algorithm. Right. So for this, what I have is a basic co-occurrence graph. Uh, uh, this uh, here, the nodes are the terms, and uh, the edges are uh, the number of times they co-occur, 
uh, and I have certain definitions, basic uh, graph theoretic definitions, like uh, there is a neighborhood uh, where neighborhood is a sub neighborhood of a term is a subgraph uh, consisting of all the neighbors of that term along with all the edges, uh, and uh, the context is a subgraph, uh, which uh, which is an uh, which is the induced subgraph of the neighborhood. If, if you can think you can think of it that way, right? And then uh, the co-occurrence graph by itself is not so useful because co-occurrences are generally undirected. So I would need a directed structure. Uh, uh, I, need, I need to convert it to a directed structure. So a very simple directed graph is like, uh, so I would weight uh, the outgoing edges from uh, A uh, as uh, 2 by 5 and 3 by 5. So I, I would have arcs of 0 0.4 and uh, 0 0.6 from A to B and A to C. So this is how I would decompose a co-occurrence graph into what I call a generatability graph. Uh, the reason why I call it that is because a generatability graph uh, uh, kind of gives us the probability that if a term t co-occurs with uh, A, then what is the probability uh, of B being t? So uh, it's that. So what is the probability that I am generating B in the, in the co-occurrence of A? Right? So, uh, with these definitions, these, the, uh, I, I would want to go into the first uh, example, right? So, we saw the first example here. Uh, let me take the second one. So, Federer and Nadal played an epic Wimbledon final. This is obvious for human beings saying, uh, it's an old example, sorry, but uh, uh, yeah. So, from this, it's obvious that uh, the context is tennis. So, how, how do I make sure that uh, the, the context is tennis? Uh, with respect to uh, our model, right? So the analytic layer definition is like uh, mostly our intentional definition. So uh, what do we intend when we say I, I want? Uh, uh, by the way, I call such terms like tennis and diabetes as topical anchors. So that's the name of the thing. And uh, the analytic layer definition kind of uh, tells me, uh, it tells, uh, gives the intentional definition of what I intend to extract when. Uh, when I uh, when I'm going about looking for a semantic, right? So, given a set of terms representing an unknown semantic context, find the term that best labels the semantic context. So, it is it, it is in some sense the term which is most uh, mostly about. So, when I am talking about uh, Federer and uh, Nadal and Wimbledon, what I am talking about is uh, in a sense tennis. So, that is what the analytic layer. Uh, uh, says and uh, then th the process of uh, converting it to co-occurrences is like I would hypothesize that uh, given a say, uh, that this can be rep represented this way, right? Given a set of terms Q belonging to an unknown context C, the topical anchor is a term which has the highest probability of mention in any document or dialogue involving C. So uh, the topical anchor. Uh, is a term which is bound to occur sooner than later uh, in any context where uh, we are talking about Federer, Nadal, and Wimbledon. So, what is the term which, which has such properties? And then we go into a co-occurrence uh, graph, and so and uh, more importantly, the generatability graph, and then say that uh, hey, uh, the most generatable term in this context uh, would be the most central term. Uh, sorry, would be the topical anchor. So, uh, for this work, we use uh, random box uh, centrality and uh, measure the most central node. Uh, this is uh, some size, the size of our co-occurrence graph for this experiment. And uh, I'll see if I can go. Yeah. So, so we, we we perform something called it's a small it's a small variant of uh, a regular random walk. So it goes like this. So I. I pick a set of query terms, and uh, uh, th these are the terms like uh, Federer, Nadal, and Wimbledon. And uh, th they are uh, okay. Uh, this is this is a thought experiment in a sense. So they are initialized with a finite set of uh, let's say they are initialized with a finite set of cash, cash, and uh, then from these terms I know the context neighborhood, and um, the query terms pass their cash on to other nodes based on the generatability probabilities, right? So I give X share of my cash to my neighbor based on what is the probability of me generating that neighbor in my co-occurrence context. Uh, so this is what I do, pass the cash, 
and uh, all those nodes which are at the fringes of so this is my context subgraph the colored nodes so all those nodes which are at the fringes of my of, of my context kind of leak this cache out of the system so the cache in the system is not conserved uh, in a sense so if i repeat this process if i iterate it uh, i this iterates to a fixed point uh, if i keep passing on cache uh, it iterates to a fixed point and the node which turns out to be uh, the highest in terms of historical cache flow or uh, turns out to be the most central node uh, in this context and um, if you look at certain examples what i did was i took uh, words like advaita and dvaita and uh, and did the same right the most central node turns out to be in the co-occurrence graph uh, vedanta and followed by god and hinduism so similarly if i take insulin insulin hypertension blood glucose and pancreas uh, i would end up with diabetes medicine and obesity uh, some actors uh, actors mathematicians you get mathematics and mathematician and uh, institutes uh, university college and technology so uh, this is what happens uh, internally and uh, so we found that with uh, for most of the cases this algorithm was work working very well so the most central node in a context is the node which is uh, which kind of is the uh, topical label of that context so uh, and this was uh, so and this semantic association is completely present in uh, inside uh, the co-occurrence graph La let me go on to topical markers and uh, let me describe topical markers in the interest of time so how much time do i have uh, okay fine uh, let me quickly talk about topical markers so so i'm so the problem here is this right john doe is looking for people interested in a topic let's say diabetes and uh, uh, or machine learning but the problem is i can't run complex algorithms on each text textual unit so the, you can't take a random walk and run it on a textual unit e on each tweet and then figure out hey whether it is about uh, 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 machine learning or diabetes uh, or not and and then figure out uh, and then filter them that's going to be difficult so can i go the other way around uh, can i can i compute keywords given a topic in a sense uh, why is this important and why is this novel uh, generally keywords are uh, are very easily defined given a document context or a very clear uh, boundary and say hey what are the keywords here but uh, given a just a topic like machine learning what are the keywords is slightly harder problem to mine and uh, so uh, and that's what we are looking at here uh, in this so it's the same set of examples but can we do can we do the other way around so uh, the other way around would be like uh, given a topic representing uh, a known semantic context find terms which unambiguously indicate the context so that's the key here so i cannot pick up uh, let us say given uh, federer nadal and uh, or given tennis i cannot pick up uh, 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 Wimbledon, uh, I'm not too sure, but uh, let's say match, I cannot pick up. Championship, I cannot pick up. I cannot pick up lots of sport, I cannot pick up. These are all terms which are important to Wimbledon, uh, important to tennis, but not unique to tennis. So I am looking for words which are uh, very, uh, which are, uh, which are kind of unambiguous in that particular context. Right? Again, I go through a set of definitions. So first, I I say, okay, uh, how do we define such a such a semantic association? Uh, so this is the definition actually here. So given a uh, given a term T representing the context uh, C, the topical markers are those terms whose presence maximizes the probability of mention of T. So the moment double fault is there. right the probability that i am talking about tennis is very high it's a just a single word which can flip the probability towards tennis a lot so uh, i i'm looking for such words right yeah, and um, and how do i identify such words so uh, for that we have a co-occurrence algorithm so the topical marker t is a is a term which has a very high probability of generating terms which are very specifically in the context c so tennis is a term and uh, if i draw a semantic context around tennis which is all the co-occurring terms of tennis so uh, double fault would be a term which would with a very high probability generate terms only in the semantic context of tennis uh, so th uh, that is something which we look for so 
So, uh, the percentage of edges to the central node, like tennis, uh, is not so useful. So, that is something which we discarded. And uh, the next thing was uh, the pers uh, percentage of edges into the context, even that wasn't making much sense. So, again, we, we went to a uh, uh, random walk. In, in this case, the random walk was a bipartite uh, hits like random walk. Hits is a well known IR uh, uh, metric where uh, uh, it, it, there is a bipartite graph and the uh, importance of the nodes on one part are dependent on the, is dependent on the importance of the nodes connected to them from on the other part. So, this is a uh, bipartite random walk uh, in hits and uh, we use that over the generatability graph and I can show you a, uh, a set of uh, results that I have, right. So, if I take uh, machine learning or quantum mechanics, so this is how I would I would get the list of uh, terms. So, there are some false positives like physics is not such a uh, not such a good result for this, but generally it is uh, uh, there are terms which are very unique to quantum mechanics. Similarly, uh, the machine learning terms are uh, pretty unique to machine learning. Right? So, these kind of semantic associations can be mined directly from uh, the co-occurrences. Right? So, I think so yeah that, that kind of sums up uh, what I am working on. Uh, the, the key is this. So, there is an unstructured text and uh, the co occurrences can be very easily observed, no rules required. And using these co occurrences, we can get to semantics. And uh, we and so for that, we built uh, a cognitive model. And we are also working on different other algorithms which are uh, outside my thesis. So, uh, like topic expansion, and uh, we can detect objects and attributes uh, using uh, the same model. And uh -huh. I think so, yes, that, that concludes the talk. Any questions? What are sort of, uh, if you just try to do this in, let us say, the whole internet, obviously there will be a scalability problem. What are some of the central mathematical ch and algorithmic challenges which you face when you try to scale? <coughs> so, uh, most of these results are, see, this is an application more important, uh, right? Uh, and uh, for this to be really applied in any, any scenario, the response times have to be very, uh, pretty good. So, uh, one of the biggest challenges we had was uh, maintaining the entire graph uh, and having reasonable compute time. So, for example, for topical anchors, we are able to uh, do a sub-second computation by keeping the entire graph in memory. So, we are able to do the random walk in, uh, in sub-second, uh, uh, we, we have sub-second response time for that. Whereas, for uh, semantic siblings, which I didn't speak about and topical markers, the response times is currently in terms of minutes, which is still, uh, uh, in the sense, given a few minutes, I would compute what are all the important words for uh, quantum mechanics. So, that would, uh, that is still very expensive and we are uh, actively working towards reducing that. So, the challenges are keeping the graph in memory and making them uh, operate, uh, uh, computing the random walks uh, as fast as possible. So, you can use some high speed matrix multiplication techniques or? Sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, up, up till now the work was primarily focused on whether uh, uh, there are semantics if we go the in in that route. So now that we know that there are semantics, we are uh, we are trying to see w w what's the best way we can uh, optimize this. So we have succeeded in optimizing topic an topical anchors, and one more there is something called topic expansion, which I which is done by somebody else. So we have optimized those two; they are they are fast enough. But the others we are we are working towards. Yeah. So we have come to the fair end of. Uh, uh, very interesting two and a half days um, and uh, actually this time I um, um, I mean I have not seen the first three editions of this um, 
uh, conference. I wasn't there in IIIT then. Uh, but uh, I, I see a distinct difference between what I saw last year and what I saw this year. Um, there were um, actually most of the talks this time, uh, including the ones by Adhikari, Kalyan, Yogananda, they had um, um, a lot of relevance to um, what we as computer scientists do. So I, I think the, the, the theme of uh, the um, interdisciplinary nature of this conference is, is really uh, seems to be coming out and that's I think a very, very positive sign. Um, um, so uh, I'm, I'm sure we will continue this trend uh, going forward. Um, uh, th this conference definitely wouldn't have, uh, at least this year, it, it certainly wouldn't have happened without uh, uh, very generous help from Professor Bala Subramaniam. He, in his capacity as the president of, uh, uh, chairman of NBHM, I'm sorry, <laughs> chairman of NBHM uh, has uh, actually supported this entire conference. Uh, so thanks a lot to you, sir. And um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and of course, Triple ITB, um, uh, with all its staff, uh, have been extremely supportive in hosting this conference. Um, starting from Professor Sargopan to our registrar, um, Mr. Ramchandra, um, Swati, Reddy, uh, all of um, um, Murugan's group uh, systems, and uh, uh, Somshaker, who took care of all the logistics. So the, the support from the Triple ITB community has been fantastic. Um, I, I um, Prasanna has already um, created a draft of um, a proposal for an ongoing um, uh, uh, to to make this conference ongoing uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, and uh, we are again going to. Uh, request Professor Bal Subramaniam to be kind enough to uh, uh, extend the support. Yeah, so I'm 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 really hoping this will continue. Um, and um, finally, of course, the uh, students have been um, remarkable. The entire group have taken care of all the back end logistics, starting from tracking uh, lunch arrangements to hotels, picking up people. Uh, making sure the uh, cabs go on time to uh, to receive whoever has to be received and all that. So uh, the, the the entire team, um, uh, Amulya, um, Abhilasha, Anushka, Puneet, uh, uh, so um, Ganesh and uh, Sunil. So thanks a lot. Uh, I think that they definitely deserve a big round of applause. And uh, yeah, and. Finally, thanks for all the hard work from Manisha and, of course, the uh, inspiration from uh, 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 from Prasanna. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, I think it's been a um, um, very fruitful two and a half days. And I think uh, um, I've missed out one very big thing. I think the, all the speakers who uh, took the trouble to come all the way, uh, many of them from from Allahabad. Uh, so thanks a lot, Adhikari, Kalyan, Ram Krishna, and Yogananda for uh, coming all the way to. And, and uh, uh, Kalyan, for example, he, he didn't even go home. He uh, jumped here uh, straight from Japan and um, um, got into this. Uh, uh, in, in spite of all the jet lag and all that. So, uh, we really appreciate uh, your coming over and uh, enlightening all of us. Uh, of course, personally for me, it was nice to uh, have known all of them for a long time and uh, um, to see all of you again here uh, um, was, was really nice. So, thanks everyone. I think uh, it's been um, wonderful and I'll, I really hope this continues. Thank you.